Hey everyone, it's day five, which I'm much more excited about than yesterday's cold showers, because today I get to paint on canvas. And now technically this isn't something I've never done before. I painted a lot as a kid and even in high school. The only time I've ever painted on canvas was when I would have been like 10 or so. And no planning whatsoever, I was sure I was gonna be Picasso. And so I sat down and decided to paint an abstract face. And it was so ugly and there was nothing I could do with it because it was on a big canvas and mum couldn't bear to throw it out. And so it just sat on the ground in the study for a couple of years haunting me with this image of unplanned, ugly, not Picasso art. That being said, I haven't planned what I'm going to paint today either. I think what I'm going to do is kind of like a self-portrait. It's going to have lots of colour, especially pink. So I'm just going to get started. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the morning just because this lighting is not gonna do it justice. But I think I'm pretty proud of what I've done. Definitely not bad for a first shot anyway. So, catch you in the morning. So I finished off my painting late last night and I decided to wait till today to show you how it looks just so we got some daylight. But today is completely miserable and pouring rain and overcast so there's still no daylight to show you this painting. Um, but anyway, this is my finished product from my first time painting on canvas. I'm pretty proud of it and I'm definitely excited to continue painting. I want to work on a larger scale I think, even bigger than that. That's the way bigger than I normally paint and I'll do little A4 things that you can see them. So I'm excited to paint larger and continue fleshing out some ideas. Anyway, today, day six, I think we're up to. I thought it would be really easy, but I've actually already messed up. So I feel like everyone knows by now that sugar is bad, or at least refined white sugar is definitely bad, and other forms of sugar might be bad. And there's constant research on this. I'm definitely no expert, but we eat a lot more sugar now than our ancestors ever used to because it is so much more accessible and it's added into any food that you can buy just because it's addictive. So I feel like it's a really good test, if nothing else, to try and cut out sugar. If I were to do it long term, I think another benefit would be my skin. I have mild acne all the time. I don't think I've had a pimple free day since I was 10. But cutting sugar can have so many benefits for your overall weight, your blood sugar levels, I think stuff to do with your gut and um, oh, sugar is hugely inflammatory. So there's just so many benefits to cutting sugar but it's in everything. For lunch I had a salad with sweet potato and broccolini and spinach and it was all in a basil pesto. And it's the only jar of vegan basil pesto that we can find, so it's like our savior. And in the ingredients list is corn syrup. Sugar. So I've already stuffed it up, but I might actually take you through my fridge and my pantry and we'll see if there is any sugar hidden in the ingredients. Second ingredient, white sugar. Second ingredient, raw sugar. Oh my god. The first ingredient is sugar. Spice mix and the first ingredient is sugar. I've got lots of tins of food and thankfully they're all kind of 100% what they say they are as far as I can tell. But tomato soup, the ingredients go Tomatoes, sugar. 
but yeah, I feel like what it boils down to is if you're making your food from scratch, like from the most basic and most fundamental ingredients that you can, you're not going to find hidden sugar because you've done all the hiding. All the sugar that I found in my fridge and in my cupboard came in the form of sauces, like dressings, like cereal, and snack foods, like chocolate. So it's very easy to do for most foods if you're cooking from scratch. But sugar cravings are a whole different thing. So I'm just cooking dinner at the moment. I'm making a lentil, eggplant, and apricot curry which I found on the Pick Up Lime blog. And I've decided to also use her recipe for vegan garlic naan bread, which I'm so excited about because I haven't had naan bread in such a long time. Usually it contains yogurt or milk. And every time I'm ordering from Uber Eats, I'm so sad that I can't add it onto my order because like, it's one of the best parts, hey? I've still got more to say Doesn't mean don't stay away Just means I care Still can't cancel when we say I've got thick skin My dinner has the dried apricots in it which is something sweet and capsicum's a bit sweet as well Ooh, ooh yum! But no added sugar and now, this beautiful, finally vegan naan recipe calls for half a tablespoon of sugar. Oh! And so I was debating just not making it, but once you get the naan on the brain, you gotta have it, right? So, simple solution, I'm just not going to add sugar. I don't know if it will ruin the recipe. I trust that it won't. I think if the recipe fails, it's more likely going to be due to my own incompetence rather than skipping a couple of good pinches of sugar. Hey everyone, how's it going? It's day seven and I'm actually quite nervous for today. Now, you've heard me mention Wim Hof before when I did cold showers, but let me go into more detail about Wim Hof himself. So, he's otherwise known as the Iceman. He's a Dutch athlete and world record holder known for his cold exposure. The records he's set include stuff like running a half marathon above the Arctic Circle, so like snow and ice and stuff. He swam under ice for record lengths, and he attributes all this to a method of training that he's developed himself called the Wim Hof Method. The cold shower I had the other day, and that I've continued trying to do actually. Cold exposure is a large part of his training, and another large part is what we're doing today, his breathing techniques. Now, it's quite different from meditation, because even though it's deep breathing, it's much more rapid, and you induce your body to show symptoms of having more oxygen and less CO2 in your body, going lightheaded and feeling tingly, and kind of the same symptoms as an anxiety attack. This is why I'm scared. I have always struggled with kind of lightheadedness and dizziness. I remember as a teenager the first time I ever had to go into a bank by myself to deposit a check and I got really nervous about doing it because I had no idea what I was doing and I was sure the bank teller would be all like, oh you've done it all wrong and I just started overthinking it and waiting in line it suddenly felt so hot in the shopping center and I just started like breathing quite rapidly and feeling tingly and hot and faint. I think I probably started crying, like I often start crying whenever any of this happens. You know, anxiety response to just such a small life thing. The fact that this method actually induces those kind of symptoms has me quite nervous to try it. But that's also one of the reasons to try it. When it starts to happen in real life, if you start having an anxiety attack, extreme heat or cold or working conditions or anything like that start making you feel these symptoms, your body is more equipped to be able to deal with it. The actual Wim Hof breathing method involves taking a series of deep breaths in and out, and you continue doing this until you start feeling lightheaded and tingly and convulsing and 
the symptoms of having extra oxygen in your body. And then, with one final big breath in, you let the breath go and hold it. So this is training our bodies to actually store oxygen. And then once you can't anymore, you take one big breath in and hold that for 15 seconds. And then you repeat the rounds. Wish me luck! Other benefits of the Wim Hof method include getting a better sleep, having more energy, having a better immune response to sickness, feeling less stressed, having improved focus. It's supposed to be one of these big cure-all kind of things and he does have scientific research backing him up. Many a scientist I believe has come and tested Wim Hof and his disciples if you will, people who have trained under him. What they found from brain scans I believe is that from practicing the Wim Hof method it actually activates the part of your brain that's responsible for sensing pain and pain reduction. Pain suppression is the word I'm looking for. And there's also another experiment I remember coming across where Wim Hof and a few other people who had been practicing his method in a controlled condition injected with a virus through their breathing techniques and the control that they learnt over their heart rate and their blood circulation they were able to actually fight off this disease or virus or, I don't know, bad health thing. They showed far fewer symptoms and they were much less inflamed. Wow, so that was really weird. My body is still shaking. It was strange. I'll tell you what my actual results were. On the first round, I was actually really scared. As soon as I exhaled and tried to retain not breathing, I felt it. Anxious to breathe again, and so I only held for 33 seconds. And then round two, and I did deep breathing for a lot longer, exhaled, and held it for a minute and seven seconds. And so round three, I just went for it. I could feel like the blood coursing through my veins and my head going light. And so my result was a minute 22, which I'm quite proud of. But now I just feel trembly. It was a good exercise to do, to test yourself, I think, to kind of understand what you can do with your body because in this exercise you exhale and then hold it like when you try and sink to the bottom of a pool but I've never really tried to hold my breath for a long time with no oxygen in my lungs and so it was very interesting and possible to do anybody could do it because you just do it for how long you feel comfortable and so I'm very interested to continue seeing research into Wim Hof's method because it is something that everyone can do and so if it does have these really productive results it's definitely something I think I'd continue doing. I don't know if I'd be able to dedicate time to doing it every day especially if I am meditating every day which I've been doing most days lately. It would be cool to see if I continue doing the breathing, if I become any better at the cold showers as well. That's it for today. I'm still cold from my shower before, I'm still trembling from the breathing so I think I'm gonna have a nice hot cup of tea and cuddle up with my cat. Come here, little boy. Come Say hi. He's a little camera shy, isn't he? Oh.